Let's upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 using the U6 Professional. I'm in my office and that's a Nano HD, which I have had quite a few of, about five I think, and they are brilliant. But they're Wi-Fi 5, so in order to keep the farm a bit upgraded, I'm going to replace it with this U6 Professional Access Point. This is probably the most popular Unify Access Point right now. I think either this or the U6 Lite. So um, I'm going to show you what's in the box. It's an access point. I know. And then, and then I'll set it up in Unify Network and uh, we'll see when we connect to it if we get more Wi-Fi's or something. So let's see what's hiding inside the box. I know it's probably not going to be terribly surprising. It's going to be an access point, but they are really neatly packaged, these things. So let's have a look. Mm. So this is the Unify 6 Pro or Professional access point. Again, we get the cover over the access point. And this is, it feels, I think this is aluminium. Or if you're in America, it's aluminum. No, we know it's called aluminium. Um, this is a one gigabit connection. Now, if you haven't checked out my video on the U6 Enterprise, that comes with a 2.5 gigabit RJ45 connection, but that does require you to have a switch that is 2.5 gigabyte gigabit. This is a one gigabit and it will be powered by PoE from your standard Unify switch. So that's the access point. And of course it comes with the template for mounting it. It has the metal mounting plate, which has become sort of standard. They're quite neat, very sturdy, and it comes with a whole bunch of different holes depending on the type of installation you want to do. So there's the wall mount, T-bar, single gang, etc., etc., etc. So depending on which type of installation you want to do, you use the holes marked accordingly. And then there is the bracket if you are going into plasterboard or uh, gyp, gyp rock. Yeah, has many names. Then if it's porous material, in other words, you can put this on top of the ceiling and put the access point underneath like that and it gets it more stability. And then of course we have all of the usual Unify, um, well, here's the grommet that goes inside the access point there. Quite nice. And there are, why are there two? Anyone in the comments know why there are two holes there? Why I can pluck out the other one? Hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, but that goes in there after we mounted it. Well, before we mounted, but after we've done the clicky in thing. And here are the usual set of um, fasteners, screws, mounts, etc. Again, depending on which style of uh, installation you want to do. So that is all there is. And then, of course, a QR code, as always. You can go scan that, see the quick setup. Um, that's it. So next, let's well, install instead of the Nano HD. All right, that's in. That's, again, not the hardest thing in the world. If you've done a few access points, it starts to get really easy. It just clicks in nicely and you're done. But let's look at the network controller and see what pops up when we adopt the U6 Pro. All right, so we're back in the Unify network controller and this is where we have all the access points. So you can see here that it's come up as let me just make that a bit bigger for you there you go as the u6 pro and of course the one that was previously office has now been disconnected that's why this is offline so well what do we do let's just adopt it shall we so we click to adopt yes we want to adopt that device the u6 pro and i said earlier that the u6 pro is probably one of the more popular of the current access points 
There's the U6 Pro, which is the one we're doing now. I have two of the U6 long range LRs, which are a larger unit, larger physical size, I think, than, than that one. Uh, I'm pointing out there because it's literally right there, the access point we just set up before. Um, and then we have the U6 Enterprise, which again, you'll check out the video if you don't know what the Enterprise is. It's a Wi-Fi 6 E device, which means it has six gigahertz Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's kind of cool um, or will be soon. And then there's the U6 Lite, which is sort of more of you domestic uh, prosumer device, I guess, which is what you would have in a, an apartment or house. But I haven't got any of those. They've been very, very difficult to get hold of, but I'm hoping to get one and check that out as well. And then I have, and I still haven't installed, there'll be a future video, the Unify 6 Mesh, which is the one that used to be called the Flex HD when it was Wi-Fi 5, and that's the soda can type um, thing for outside. So I'm going to replace another access point outside with that as well. So I'm doing a whole bunch of Wi-Fi 6 upgrades to uh, future-proof basically our, on my farm and all the devices that we connect here. But we've now adopted the U6 Pro and I was expecting that to have an update. Oh no, it's still getting ready. It'll probably need to be updated as well once it's uh, done its thing. And um, yeah, so Wi-Fi 6, if you don't know much about it, it's sort of the new standard of Wi-Fi. It allows, through magic and hardware, uh, faster Wi-Fi speeds. So I did a very long time ago, two years ago, I think, I did my first Wi-Fi 6 video for the Amplify Alien setup with my brother. So I set it up, <laughs> I set up Wi-Fi 6 over Zoom. That was interesting. Um, and then, uh, of course, we are now all the devices we buy new devices phones in particular but also tvs and, and computers laptops are now wi-fi 6. so it makes sense to upgrade to get those faster wi-fi speeds in anticipation of just more data in the future we're not going to be sending and receiving less data are we all right as i anticipated this device needs to be updated but i'm just going to click here and then it'll be updated because youtube that's it it's updated excellent now, my first port of call is always updating the name. So I'm gonna have to do that first. So, yep. Office, well, because that's where it is. And we apply those changes. Now, I've had this a couple of times happening and you can see it's happening now too. It says meshing to cottages, which means it's connecting wirelessly as an uplink to another access point, which is next door. Um, which I don't want that to happen. I wanted to use the wired connection. In fact, all my access points use wired connections. I'm not sure why it does this. You can see there's another one that does it as well. The media room connects to the kitchen. So let's let's just have a look through the uh, different features of this access point. Now we have the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. If you have heard of Wi-Fi 6E, that is the Unify 6. Uh, U6 Enterprise, which has uh, a six gigahertz band as well. Now you need devices that has the six gigahertz radio. I tried connecting my phone, but because there's a bug with uh, Pixel 7 Pros, apparently I couldn't do it, but check out the video anyway. Um, and then other than that, we have the standard, uh, you know, IP address, MAC address, device version. Um, and then we have the load average, which can be interesting to see if you have a really fast internet connection, you see how much load is going through it. Um, and then we have the hotspot, which is my guest hotspot. And then we have the air stats. So these are for the different, for the two different antennas. We can see the transmit power, uh, the transaction up and down. So the tra TX and RX tra transmitted and received uh, packets or bytes. And then the retries or the dropped packets as well so now we don't have anything connecting to it just yet because you've only just set it up so my phone is probably connected to something else my computer that i'm using now is connected uh, via a LAN port to the switch so uh, right now there's nothing connected to this with wireless and then we have the mesh parent here now i'm not sure why it does this why won't it use the wired connection uh, when I hook it up because it is connected it's got PoE and it is connected to the switch but yet it still decides to wirelessly uplink and I don't really want it to do that because that creates actually slower speeds you know we, we are subject to interference then and all sorts of things so I will fix that later anyway but you can see if you are meshing in case you don't have PoE you can power the access point with a PoE adapter 
and then it'll wirelessly connect. And then we, if it's part of any access point groups, so you can set up different kinds of groups. The insights, um, there's some history and there's the channel usage. You can see uh, we have 28% utilized of that band. So that's the number of channels that we are using in 2.4 and 5 as well, uh, gigahertz bands. And then the settings, we can see here if we want to manage this by global AP settings, we have to take that off if we want to change the radios here. Um, now it's not recommended to change the channel width for 2.4 to anything but 20. You just get too much interference. Um, that's why we have 5 gigahertz and now 6 gigahertz uh, bandwidths. But you can change it if we have some requirements to do so. And the same with 5 gigahertz, you can change that as well. I tend to leave these on auto or globally managed because I, I trust Unify in that sense. I don't know if I always should, but I do. Um, and then we have some band steering, whether we want it to be uh, off, which it is usually, or we can prefer 5 gigahertz, so we push 5 gigahertz because it's a broader band. I'm guessing that will come to 6 gigahertz eventually as well. We can band steer to that. And then we have network and etc. etc. system, you know, update, locate, restart. Hmm. If we just look at the product page for the access point, you can see here that it has 5.3 gigabits per second aggregate throughput rate. Now you're not going to get that for your single device. That is an aggregate. It's the you know the maximum throughput for all the devices that are connected to it. And as you can see here, it's a gigabit. I mentioned that before, gigabit connection. Now, in terms of uh, the let's see the product summary here the transmission you can see here the throughput rate that gets to 5.4 because it combines 2.4 and 5 gigahertz throughput rates and then we have the antenna gain so it's not long range the long range has much higher gain for the antenna um, and then just standard stuff what else we got uh, concurrent clients 350 I should just manage <laughs> <laughs> in the country here um, and then there's the support, supported data rates for all the different bands of Wi-Fi so 456 and old school ABG um, I think that's that's about it um, it runs at 13 watts so reasonably power hungry but it doesn't always run at 13 watts all right so that's it it's pretty simple it's a really powerful device the pro is um, unless you need Wi-Fi 6E or more than 350 connections to your access point, then the Pro is a very good choice. If you have any questions on this access point and what, especially why is it wirelessly uplinking? Anyway, let me know in the comments. Um, I hope you'll subscribe to the video. To the video? No, subscribe to the channel. That's better than you get all the other videos. I know. Um, and uh, I have a bunch of more videos lined up that I'm going to uh, create. One of them is the mesh, um, the U6 mesh, the next access point, but a whole bunch of other stuff as well, especially home automation as well. So um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Let's upgrade to Elfnika and Elfnika Algolobler.